Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamonds for Thursday, September 12th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. We've got NFL, college football, Thursday night football coming your way, and three MLB games on tap. So let me know in the comments below what your MLB, NFL, college football picks are for tonight for this upcoming weekend. Where you agree, where you disagree, all is welcome, guys. Throw out any questions as well. We'll do a question and answer uh on tomorrow's show so smash that like button if you're liking the content as we got first game up hitting the nfl first 8 15 eastern time afc east division battle between the buffalo bills and the miami dolphins we are seeing dolphins minus two and a hook minus two at some shops 48 and a half being the total in miami gardens both teams come in one and oh straight up oh and one against the spread the dolphins went down by a half a point didn't cover against the Jags and the Bills. Comeback fashion against the Cardinals, as did the Dolphins against the Jaguars, but uh, fell just short ATS by one point against the Cardinals. Guys, in this breakdown, it's a short week on the road for both of the two, I guess, NFL and college football games. We're going to be breaking down here. So that's against the Buffalo Bills. It will also be against the Arizona State Sun Devils in the next matchup. But do want to break this one down in terms of the Miami Dolphins offense. Last season, they played 17 games against in 15 of the games. They averaged 30 points a game. But in the two games, you know, in division against the Bills, they only averaged 17 points. Maybe something here with the Bills defensive scheme, you know, be performing very well against this Dolphins offense. Now, we do need to note that the Bills have two new safeties this year. They're going to get tested. You know, Waddle, Hill on the outside, Tua. Hey, I know he's got a lot of haters, but he can definitely put some touch on that deep ball. So we'll see if they can hit enough plays. Um, the Dolphins, 10-5 and five as a home favorite. Their last 15 times being favored in Hard Rock. But you got to remember, some of their home field advantage is the sun beats on the opposing uh on the opposing sideline, whereas they're in the shade, this is a night game. So they're not going to have that same home advantage. Plus the Bills, 10 and 1, their last 11 against the Dolphins, but just 6 and 5 ATS. Overall, guys, I think this is back and forth. Not a best bet by any means on the Thursday night slate, but I do think the Dolphins hit enough big plays. Hey, if you're needing something, I'd find the two flat. Let's jump on the Dolphins, minus two over the Bills to start off the NFL Thursday night uh, card here for week two. Heading over to college football. This will be about 45 minutes earlier. Arizona State, Texas State on ESPN. We get minus one and a hook. That's Arizona State as the road favorite. 60 and a half being the total. Both teams come in, you know, over I, what preseason expe expectations were. They both look good. Uh, Arizona State first up. Great defense so far. Actually, top 15 in terms of yards per game per game against. And offensively, they've scored just short of 80 points against two F FBS opponents, including an SEC team in Mississippi State they just beat last week. They're running back Scadaboo over 300 yards so far. He's averaging over seven yards per carry. Now on the Bobcats side of things, it is in San Marcos, Texas. What I've heard, it's a fun town. Should be a great atmosphere here as they're hosting, you know, a power four team. They beat UTSA last week. I don't know how good that Roadrunners team, though, is this season. You know, they lost their uh, the, their quarterback from seasons past. Their quarterback, McLeod, talking about Texas State here, he's looked good. He's, he's a pretty good player. And this is a team that returned 18 starters from last season, plus their last three home games. They're plus 70 ATS points against the spread. So for whatever reason, odds makers have really kind of undervalued this Bobcat squad. Sidewise, I think it's tough. I think there's more talent on Arizona State. And if they're able to run the football, it's going to be a tough night for Texas State. But at the same time, I think the spot favors the home team and the Bobcats. Short week with travel for Arizona State. Guys, more so. There's something going on in college football right out the gate. Now, granted, it's kind of a short sample, just over 150 games so far. But unders are hitting at 57% in college football. And we get this Arizona State team that we just went over their rushing stats. I think that they're going to look to run the ball a bunch here. 
and taking advantage of that kind of blimps view, 57% towards the under, short week. I could see both offenses struggling out the gate. We get a 60 and a hook. That's a pretty hefty total here. I, I, I think Arizona State's going to look to run some clock, guys. I don't think we get up into the 60s. Hey, for Arizona State, Texas State, best bet in this one, let's go under 60 and a hook for the Sun Devils and the Bobcats. Turning the page here to the Diamond, we got three MLB games coming your way, 715 Eastern. First one up, Boston Red Sox, New York Yankees, game one of four games set over the weekend. Boston comes in hovering right around 500. The Yankees, what, 20 games over 500. They've won three of the last four times. Nestor Cortez has taken the hill, and it is Cortez, the slated starter for the Bronx Bombers. For the Red Sox, actually, it's still undecided as I'm doing this video here. Uh, actually, the night before, it's either likely going to be Criswell or Tanner Hawk. We get a total of eight and a half. Minus 158, that's the Yankees as the home favorite. If it is Criswell, he's a reliever, starter. Okay, numbers, 4-1 ERA and FIP, but he doesn't go very deep. Just three, maybe up to as high as five innings. And it leads into the Boston Red Sox bullpen. They've not been great. Neither of the Yankees. If it's Tanner Hawk, he's 8-10 and 10 on the season. Similar numbers overall. But both have been hit around by this Yankees lineup. It's a limited sample year to date, but both numbers going up against the the Bronx Bombers have not been good. And we got to be reminded, this is a Yankees lineup, number one overall, number one against righties. So, hey, I'm looking to be on the Yankees here. And really the reason is, because most of that's probably worked into the line, but Nestor Cortez, their starter, the 29-year-old out of Hialeah, Florida, the southpaw, he added a new changeup as the season went on. And sure enough, since mid-August, He's got a 1.86 ERA with a 23 to 4 strikeout to walk ratio. Love finding changes like that. An arsenal of pitcher. Hey, that checks the box. He's 4 and 0 uh, since mid August. I think the Yanks take this one. I don't love laying near minus 160. And with the home team, we don't like laying that one and a half run line. So, guys, let's jump on the Yankees minus one run line and uh, get that number down. We're on the Yankees minus one over the Red Sox. Also 7.15 Eastern start time, Tampa Bay Rays, Cleveland Guardians. It's Gavin Williams going for Cleveland. Ryan Pepio for the Rays. Seven and a hook being the total, minus 135. That's Cleveland as the home favorite. More than 20 games over 500 for Cleveland. They're the most profitable team in the American League, up double-digit units for the season. They're also 43 and 25. They've been monsters at home. They've won three straight. They're seven and three, their last 10. Spot wise, it's not very good for Cleveland, though. This is their first game home off of a three city road trip. That's been a great fade for us. We've done it a bunch, actually, even this week with success. So that's what's making me pump the brakes on laying the 35 cents with Cleveland. They're up against the Rays here. This is not a team I'm looking to bet on. If you remember, they were kind of in the mix for the playoffs, and then they were sellers at the deadline. Of course, you know, this organization, uh, they're, they're not into spending money, and that's putting it nicely. They got Pepio on the hill. Solid year. 3-6 ERA, 4 FIP, 118-40 to 40 strikeout to walk ratio. And he's up against Gavin Williams, the starter for Cleveland, a guy that throws really hard, you know, 97, 98 miles per hour. But his last time out, the Dodgers really hammered him. He didn't he didn't make it out of the first inning, giving up five hits, three walks. The velocity was there, though. So I think he's actually going to bounce back. His last time against this Rays lineup, he went five innings, just one earned run, three hits given up. I think both starters are going to have a, have a good outing here. And we mentioned the bad spot for Cleveland. I think it affects their offense. I think they have trouble putting up some crooked numbers here, guys. I know it's a low total of seven and a hook. But I'm looking to go under. I mean, Cleveland, depending on what number you've gotten, they're 10 of their last 11 games under. The Rays have trended under for the full season. I, I could see this one ending up, you know, 3-1, 4-2, something of that nature. I don't think we get the eight runs, guys. Let's go under Rays and Guardians. One game left. Hey, guys, if you're liking the content, smash that like button, comment below. It does help out the algorithm. I'll uh, be in there reading the comments, chiming it up with you guys, and uh, feel free to put in your MLB, college football, NFL picks. All is welcome. Last game left, uh, 945 Eastern, last game on the card here. 
degenerate special, if you will, the get back special, hopefully not for us in this one, but it's Frankie Montez and the Milwaukee Brewers up against the San Francisco Giants going with Hayden Birdsong. Total of eight minus 130. That's the Brew Crew as the road favorite. They're more than 20 games over 500. First place in the NL Central. The Giants, eh, fourth place in the NL West. Not likely to make the playoffs here. This is game three of a three-game set. Frankie Montez for the Brew Crew. He's just 6-10 and 10 on the season, 4-7 ERA and FIP. He's a guy that's struggling with, with control. 57 walks on the season. And his last time against this Giants lineup that hasn't been great overall, but when they face Montez, he just went four innings, seven hits, five runs. So they got to him pretty well. He's up against Birdsong here for the Giants. Talk about control issues. 13 walks his last 10 innings. 16 walks his last four starts. He's got 35 walks year to date and only 52 innings completed. So this guy's really struggling with control. And when you add on top of it an 18% home run to fly ball ratio, man, I, you don't have to be, a, a, you know, betting MLB each and every day to know if you're walking guys and giving up home runs, that's not success uh, for a pitcher in Major League Baseball. And he faced the Milwaukee Brewers two starts ago, didn't make it out of the fourth inning, giving up five earned with four walks in that start. I think we're going to get a bunch of runs here, guys. I know it's a night game, pitcher's park. This isn't usually the profile I looked to bet an over. But with these two starters, with those question marks, the Giants' bullpen has had their issues. And this Brewers lineup has been pretty good overall. A top 10 lineup, top 10 against righties. Hey, I think we get some crooked numbers. Let's go up and over eight in the Giants and the Brewers. In recap, we're on the Rays, Cleveland, under seven and a hook. We get that uh, reduced juice, by the way. Yankees minus one line at home over the Red Sox in college football. We're on Arizona State, Texas State to the under. A lot of running from the Sun Devils. Think that clock gets ticking. I don't think we get into the 60s. And in the NFL game, hey, it's the Miami Dolphins minus two over the Buffalo Bills. I am Drew Martin. Guys, it's going to do it for the Thursday show. We'll be back on Friday. Smash that like button, comment below, cash those tickets. Thanks for tuning in.